Hi everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and today we're going to look at some of the things uh, that are included in the C++ standard library uh, in this episode of C++ Crash Course. And the first thing we're going to look at is vectors. So we already looked at, you know, how we can kind of do uh, C style arrays um, with the square brackets and storing elements, but sometimes it would be convenient if we had another method of storing data, one that, you know, maybe has some more built-in types of things we can do with it, one where we can say, you know, automatically determine its size without needing another variable that says what size it is, as well as, you know, being able to do some clever operations. So let's go ahead and open up our example today. It's going to be vectors.cpp. So in this case, we're going to include something new. So we'll have iostream, of course, to print things out, but then we'll go ahead and have vector. Now, let's go ahead and start off. So how do we uh, declare uh, a vector? So a vector uh, declaration looks like this. So the data type is vector, and then we'll have this less than, int, greater than sign. Now, uh, this will, so this just says that we want a vector of integers. Now this could be whatever data type we want. It could be, you know, one that we define our own data type as like a class. It could be a struct, it could be doubles, floats, uh, chars, whatever we want. Uh, now this, this kind of notation with these brackets, we'll get into that more when we talk about templates, but all you can basically think of is, uh, here we have something called a vector, and when we give it, say, integer as an input right here, it says, I'll give you something for vector, but for specifically integers. And then our name, we'll just call it v1. Now vectors are interesting because unlike uh, arrays where we first you know, have an array, we give it a size and then we start filling it, a vector doesn't really have you know, any space to begin with, but we can kind of dynamically, or we can dynamically expand it using one of the built-in methods for vectors, which is this pushback. Now what this pushback will do is at the end of the vector, it will add a new element and then whatever that element is, is what we pass into pushback. So in this case, we'll go ahead and iterate from i equals zero, i is less than 10, i plus plus. So our vector will be filled from uh, with 10 different elements uh, and the, the, uh, the values of those elements will be zero through nine. So we'll go ahead and print the vector and we'll do that with a little function up here. Then we'll just iterate over the vector. This time, a thing that we can't get with just a normal array with this vector that we'll pass in by uh, reference, we can actually get the size or how many elements are stored within that vector automatically. And we just call v.size in this case. And so that will tell us how many things are in the vector or how many uh, spaces can things be in the vector. We'll see that you know we can have more space than we have elements, of course. We could have an array, uh, a normal array that has 100 things, but we've only filled the first element. So let's go ahead and move on. So we'll also see that we can use different methods. There's a lot of methods. We'll just go over some of the most, uh, the more useful ones, or at least a lot of the very common ones. So we can get the first element within a vector. And so we can just get that with this front method. We can get the last element using this v1.back. And then of course we can also index into this, just like an array using the square bracket notation. So we can also print the first element like this. Now, what if we want to clear all the values in a vector or get rid of everything and, and get it back to uh, you know, not storing anything? Well, we can just call this method clear and that will go ahead and do that for us. So then we'll go ahead and print out the size here and the size will go to zero. So then what if we want to go ahead and allocate some space ahead of time? So we can use this resize method and this resize method will go ahead and give us this many entries in this vector of whatever data type it is, in this case, integers. So what it will do, it will give us 10 integers that are all initialized to zero in this case. And our size will now be 10. Then we'll go ahead and print this out. And we'll go ahead and reinitialize. Now we have another method. So at allows us to just kind of like using that square bracket notation it gives us you know, the element at that point. So in this case, we're just kind of showing off another method here. We could just as easily do that square bracket notation. 
Another unique thing we can do is not only can we do push back, which will insert an element at the end of a, uh, of a vector, we can also insert at any point in the vector. So in this case, we'll call insert. So v.begin will give us the first entry in that vector. Then we can add four to this. So just kind of like how uh, when we went over pointer arithmetic, well, when we did add it, when we added say a number to a pointer, it would automatically say, well, I know I'm an integer pointer, so I'll go over four times the space of an integer. It didn't just add four to the location of memory, or it didn't just add say, uh, you know, if we did one here, it wouldn't just add one to the location of memory. So it's kind of smart, and it says when I do the one dot begin plus four, it says I'll look for uh, the first spot in my vector. And then I'll put this in the offset of four spots away from that. And we'll go ahead and put a five in there. And so what this does is at this position, so from the beginning offset of four, so the fifth position, what this will do is it will insert into the vector just before that position. So if I say insert at the fifth position, it will insert something right behind that. Then we'll go ahead and show that not only can we put something in a vector, we can also erase something. So in this case, we can erase something specifically. We'll just erase what we put in, so that uh, that five that we put in. And then we, we see that we can also get rid of elements one by one pretty conveniently. We don't have to just call erase and calculate, say, the location or the, so the new size of the vector. This pop back method will automatically delete the last element in the vector. OK, so let's go ahead and compile this. So it will be G++ dash O on vectors, no errors, it's always good, and we'll run it. So here we have a vector that we initialize with 0 through 9. Using that first method, we get 0. The last uh, method, we get 9. And then just with normal C-style type uh, array-like indexing, we can also get the first element as 0. Now, when we print out the size of it, after we call the clear method, we see that it gets rid of uh, the memory that we have, so it actually is zero. But when we call resize, we can specifically get, uh, when we call resize, we can get all 10 entries initialized to zero, like we see printed out here. So right here is after we call insert. So after insert at zero, one, two, uh, uh, sorry, zero, one, two, three, four, we have this five that we inserted. Remember, it, we did begin plus four, so that would go begin plus one, two, three, uh, or plus uh, one, two, three, four, right? So we'll go ahead and insert here. So it was originally four in this place. So it pushes four up one, and then it'll put uh, this five here at that position. Then we go ahead using, um, when we go ahead, went ahead and cleared that element. So when we called, uh, oops, that was the binary. So when we so we when we went ahead and we called erase, yeah erase, uh, we got rid of what we had uh, inserted right there, and then we when we did push back we deleted the last element, which can be a very convenient thing if say we want to process things in order we can say, you know, process or if we want to do something whatever came in first say, uh, you know first if we did some kind of weird first in last out type scheduling thing and we want to process whatever is first in line uh, or whatever is yeah whatever is first in line it would be the last element if we were doing push back so if we do pop back we can just get rid of the last elements we can just process things and pop them off as soon as we're done with them so that's just a pretty convenient thing as you can see they've got a lot of different things we can kind of play around with and they're a lot more convenient than c style arrays because we can automatically get their size we can resize them um, which is a really nice thing to do. So as always, if we go to the GitHub page of C++ Crash Course, so this will be at github.com slash coffee before arch. And if we go to fundamental concepts, or if we go down here all the way to uh, vectors, we can go to the file we worked with today. So feel free to download this, play around with it, and shoot me a message if you have any questions. Other than that, my name is Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.